and modern physics. We have seen first unit interference, diffraction and polarization. We will start our unit number 3, electromagnetic theory. Uh, the lesson 1 of this electromagnetic theory is introduction and Maxwell's equation part 1. We know that there are 4 Maxwell's equation. So, in this unit we will see some introductory part and we will see first Maxwell's equation. Uh, the objective of this unit are to derive Maxwell's equation and explain their significance in electromagnetic theory. To describe propagation of electromagnetic wave in free space and in dielectric medium. To explain boundary conditions and pointing theorem. So, in this lesson, the objectives of this lesson 1 are to define and explain electromagnetic wave concept and to discuss basics of vector calculus and Maxwell's first equation. So, we all know that light is an electromagnetic wave. So, as you can see on the screen, this electromagnetic wave has uh, electric field vector and magnetic field vector. They are propagating in third perpendicular direction. So, this electric field vector and magnetic field vector you can see they are uh, vibrating in uh, perpendicular direction and the propagation vector is denoted by K. Uh, here we say that vector electric field is also vector, magnetic field is also vector. So, first we will see what is mean by vector and what are the differences between scalar and vector. So, if when we say scalar, scalar is the physical quantity that has only magnitude and direction is not required to specify that particular quantity. For example, distance, uh, speed, mass, density, etc. So, these quantities they do not require any direction uh, to specify this particular quantity. Uh, now, if uh, we say vector, vectors are physical quantities that require both magnitude as well as direction. So, example for this is displacement. For example, when we give direction or when we specify direction of distance, it becomes displacement. Similarly, when we specify direction for speed, uh, we call it as a velocity. So, displacement, velocity, they are vector quantities. Distance, speed, they are scal scalar quantities. Uh, along with this, uh, other quantities are acceleration, force and some more uh, physical quantities. So, let us now uh, see vector calculus that means there are certain uh, operators uh, that can be used on these vectors we can add vectors we can subtract vectors similarly we can uh, take multiplication of these vectors so we can take products and there are two types of product products uh, the scalar product and vector product or uh, dot product and cross product so when we take dot product of these two vectors a vector a and vector b we uh, find out how much they are parallel to each other. So, when we take dot product of this, we, uh, we will get the quantity a b cos theta. That means, if these two vectors, they are parallel to each other, theta becomes 0, cos theta is 1 and we get maximum quantity that is a into b. And the, when we take the cross product a cross b, then we find out how much these two vectors they are perpendicular to each other because this is equal to a b into sin theta. So, as you know when theta is equal to 90 degree, we get maximum product. Similarly, we can also use some other operators uh, and we can perform some other operations on these vectors such as gradient, divergence and curl of a vector. Uh, and for that purpose, we require an operator which is called as a del operator. Of course, gradient is the operation that perform on scalar quantities. So, when we take gradient of a scalar quantity, this gradient that means uh, del operator multiplied by this scalar quantity or scalar function f which is function of again x, y and uh, z and of course time t. Uh, when uh, before we move to this gradient, let us first see what is the del operator. Del operator is given by i into dou by dou x plus j into dou by dou y plus k into dou by dou z. 
So here this I cap, J cap, K cap, they are the unit vectors along X, Y and Z direction. Uh, and if you see here dou by dou x, dou by dou y and dou by dou z, it gives us the change in that quantity, change in that field along x, y and z direction. So let's first see what is mean by gradient of a scalar function. So gradient of scalar function is simply the product of uh, this del operator and that function f. So when we take gradient, we get uh, I into dou f by dou x plus j into dou f by dou y plus k into dou f by dou z. Because this del operator has this unit vectors i, j, k, they get multiplied to this dou by dou x and so on. Right? So, here unit vectors get added to this gradient uh, of this particular scalar function. Now, uh, this when we find out gradient of any uh, uh, field uh, that gives us this gradient uh, gives us the direction of maximum change. Okay, the direction of maximum change as, as you can see in this diagram, this gives us direction of maximum change in that field. So, uh, let us now see the divergence of vector field f which is function of x, y, z and t. So, this divergence is nothing but a dot product of del operator and that vector field and this vector field also has unit vectors i, j, k along x, y and z axis. So, when we take dot products of this uh, del operator and vector field, uh, we get uh, this uh, equation dou f by dou x plus dou f by dou y plus dou f by dou z. That means this this di uh, divergence of a vector field gives us change in the magnitude of that vector field along x, y and z direction. Uh, so, if uh, we consider this particular charge Q, we know that uh, electric uh, lines of force, they moves away from that uh, point charge if it is positive charge. So, here you can see that electric field is moving in outward direction that means we get divergence in all positive direction. So, for this particular case when this field is diverging in outward direction, uh, the divergence is greater than 0 that means it is positive. Whereas, uh, if uh, the field is concentrated at particular point, uh, then the divergence uh, at that point is less than 0 that means it is negative. Uh, and if uh, the field is not diverging, it is moving from only one direction to other direction without any change, then the divergence is equal to 0. Uh, so, we know that when divergence is greater than 0, we consider that point as source, uh, when that divergence is less than 0, we consider that point as sink. So, now let us see the third operation that can be performed on vector field that is nothing but the curl and as you can see this curl of vector field can be given by the uh, cross product of del operator and that vector field f. So, to find out this curl we have to take uh, we have to find out the uh, determinant uh, we have to uh, find out the value of this particular determinant and it comes out to be i into dou f z by dou y minus dou f y by dou z minus j inside the bracket dou f z by dou x minus dou f x by dou z plus k inside the bracket dou f y by dou x minus dou f z x by dou z. So, uh, when we solve we'll, we'll, we get the curl of that vector field uh, and the significance of this curl of that vector field uh, is nothing but it gives us uh, how much that vector field curls around a particular point or it changes its direction around that particular point. So, if that field is curling or changing its direction the curl is positive. So, curl of a field is defined as the circulation density at each point of the field and it is also measure of tendency of a particle or field to rotate about an axis. 
Uh, so, here is the reflection spot for you. We have seen uh, this some operations on vector field. So, which of the following operations results into a scalar quantity? Uh, a. Gradient of scalar, B. Divergence of vector or C. Curl of a vector. You can think over it, you can pause the video, think over it and you can give the answer. I hope uh, you have got your answer and the an correct option is option B that is divergence of a vector. Let us see how. Uh, we know that gradient of scalar field it gives us i into dou f by dou x and as I told you this i, j, k these are the unit vectors along uh, x, y and z direction. So, unit vector that means this gradient of scalar field it gives us uh, vector quantity. Uh, now, if we see curl, curl of a vector field that also has this unit, unit vectors multiplied to a certain quantity and therefore, uh, this curl also results into vector quantity. Whereas, if we see the divergence, divergence of that vector quantity does not have any unit vectors multiplied, but it just gives us the change in that vector field along x, y and z direction and thus it is, no, it is nothing but the uh, magnitude of that particular uh, change. So, divergence is uh, scalar quantity or divergence gives a scalar quantity. So, now consider there is this one particular field uh, that passes from uh, one uh, surface uh, when that field has only one direction okay uh, then uh, we say that this, that field has uh, as it is passing through a certain uh, surface uh, this field can be written as integration f dot ds where ds is small surface area and integration over that surface it gives us the total field that passes through this particular surface now consider this surface is a closed surface like this now this closed surface includes a certain volume Right, and as uh, this is the closed surface, now uh, the integration it becomes a closed surface integral of f dot ds. Now, uh, this field it passes through the other end along the same direction as well as it can pass along certain other directions also because now the surface is closed surface. So, here the field. Uh, has got divergence now the field got diverges in all possible direction so when closed surface encloses a volume the field gate divergence and hence this can be equal to del dot f over dv and when we integrate it it is equal to integration closed surface of f into ds so this particular theorem is called as a gauss divergence theorem so when a field enters into a closed surface it diverges and therefore the surface integral can be converted into volume integral by taking its divergence so it is given by gauss divergence theorem it is required for this particular uh, unit and therefore, we have seen this particular Gauss divergence theorem. Along with Gauss divergence theorem, there is one more theorem that converts line integral into surface integral. So, suppose there is this field along this particular direction and suppose this is vector field F and when uh, sup uh, suppose this is the wire when that wire gets curled, then that vector field it is curling around the wire like this. Right. So, when that field is uh, along the wire, it is given by integration f dot dl integral over l and when it is closed line integral, it becomes closed loop or closed line integral f dot dl. Now, when uh, this particular closed loop is there, it encloses certain surface and hence uh, surface integral we have to take and when that surface is enclosed by the closed loop, uh, the field is curled around that particular point and hence it is given by curl of a vector field. So, closed surface integral can be converted into surface integral by taking curl of that vector field. So, this is nothing but the Stokes theorem. Uh, so, let us now see Maxwell's first equation uh, which is based on Gauss law. Uh, 
uh, in electrostatics we all know the gauss law in electrostatics the total normal electric induction over a closed surface is equal to the sum of all the charges enclosed by that surface so now uh, electric induction is nothing but the electric flux that is induced and the charge is given by q now consider this is the closed surface okay so now uh, let's consider a small point charge q uh, inside this closed surface and from that point charge uh, the electric lines of force they are moving in all possible direction now consider a small surface area ds on that surface itself and the electric uh, flux that moving out of this of that small surface is say d phi so q is the charge enclosed by volume v since it is closed surface it encloses volume so q is the charge enclosed by volume v and d phi is the flux enclosed by that uh, d phi is the flux that come out by that area d s so uh, according to uh, this maxwell's equation uh, d phi is the flux that moving out or coming out through this surface area d s and it is equal to e dot d s electric field uh, into uh, surface area d s the total flux throughout this uh, whole uh, surface is given by integration so integration d phi is equal to integration e dot d s we know the definition of electric field uh, uh, that uh, it is equal to d phi by d s and hence we have got this particular equation so when e is equal to d phi by d s d phi is equal to e into d s so we have got this equation number one Similarly, we have another definition for that electric field and it is given by 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught q by r square that is force per unit charge. Uh, when we use this uh, equation E into this equation number 1, we get phi is equal to, instead of E we have to put this. So, 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught q upon r square into ds. So, we can take this q upon 4 pi epsilon naught outside the integration since these are whole quantities and we can keep this ds upon r square inside that integration where r is this uh, radius vector uh, which is given over here. Uh, now, let us uh, solve further. Uh, suppose uh, we take this q upon 4 pi epsilon naught out, uh, uh, outside that integration our equation now becomes phi is equal to this ds upon r, integration ds upon r square. But ds upon r square is nothing but surface area upon uh, radius vector square or position vector square and this is nothing but the solid angle which is enclosed by this particular surface area. So, the solid angle enclosed by this surface area ds is nothing but dq and it is equal to ds upon r square. So, here for this ds upon r square we can use d omega that is nothing but solid angle enclosed by that surface area ds. Uh, if we consider the whole surface it is given by integration and as it is closed surface the total angle enclosed by the uh, closed surface is nothing but 4 pi. So, when we uh, put this integration d omega is equal to 4 pi our equation now becomes q is it, uh, sorry phi is equal to q upon 4 pi epsilon naught multiplied by 4 pi which is for integration d omega 4 pi 4 pi gets cancelled out and we get uh, q by epsilon naught and this phi as we have seen in previous slide this phi is also equal to integration e dot ds since it is closed surface we have written closed surface integral that is equal to q by epsilon naught which is obtained from this particular equation so our equation number two is phi is equal to closed surface integral e dot ds is equal to q by epsilon naught so this is one of the form of gauss uh, law in electrostatics if dq is the charge over volume dv then surface charge dens uh, sorry volumetric charge density is given by dq by dv that implies dq is equal to rho into dv and hence the total charge q is given by integration of rho into dv so we can uh, use this equation number 3 and uh, simplify this equation number 2 
So from equation 2 and 3, we can write integration e dot ds. This is closed surface integral that is equal to integral rho upon epsilon naught into dv. It is again volume integral. Uh, so, as you can see left hand side of this equation is surface integral and right hand side is volume integral. Uh, so, by using Gauss divergence theorem, we can uh, convert this closed surface integral into volume integral that is integration e dot ds of course over a closed surface is equal to divergence of uh, electric field uh, over dv. So, we can use this uh, particular uh, equation and uh, our first equation becomes integration del dot E dV is equal to integration rho by epsilon naught into dV. Now, you can see both these integrals, they are volume integrals and therefore, we can equate integrands of this equation that is del dot E is equal to rho by epsilon naught. This is Maxwell's first equation. That means divergence of electric field is non-zero that is equal to rho by epsilon naught. So, it also uh, uh, tells us that the electric field can be unipolar that means the charges can be uh, we have positive and negative charges separate and hence uh, it can be unipolar. Thank you. We will see the remaining uh, Maxwell's equation in our next lectures. So, gradient gives us direction of maximum change in that particular field.